Deputy Tully. Um, first of all, while Sinn Féin are supporting this bill, there are aspects of it I am concerned about. I mean, a just transition must occur if this is to work. I live in the heart of rural Ireland and I am very concerned about the effects that initiatives under this bill are going to have on people or indeed having on people living in rural Ireland and in particular on the farming community. People or the vast majority of people generally agree that we do need to change the way we live in order to save the planet and we all know it is a crisis point. And Ireland, as small as it is, must do its part. However, I do feel that carbon taxes on people in rural Ireland are totally unfair. The increase in the cost of petrol and diesel impacts people in rural Ireland much more than people in urban areas because in rural areas people do not have alternative transport options, for example. And on the farm, farmers and contractors must use heavy machinery which operates on diesel. They have no options. Farmers are already caring for the environment and are willing to find environmentally ways of, of, of operating environmentally friendly ways, I should say, of operating, but ways must be found working with farmers instead of penalising them by posing taxes and tariffs. I'm also aware that turf and peat harvesting has been restricted on many bogs throughout the country. Now, this has led to the importation of briquettes from other countries and the importation of peat for those that work in the horticulture sector. Now, those in the horticulture sector, for example, have no option but to import peat to ensure the business con uh, continuity. But and they can't access the peat here. But I mean, the importation of products is not just bad for the Irish economy, it's also bad for the environment. I mean, fumes from transporting these products is causing a huge amount of damage. So I think a proper plan needs to be put in place for the safe harvesting of peat products in this country for the sectors that need them, rather than having to import them from other countries. And many rural families also depend on turf for heating their homes. It's an economic necessity and they cannot afford to buy other types of fuel. And also, when referencing fuel, I mean, traders from the north are selling coal and briquettes uh, down south much cheaper than traders are here due to the fact that registered traders have to pay carbon tax in the 26 counties. There is nobody monitoring this activity. Fuel has been sold door to door in Cavan out of fans. Um, and there needs to be an all island approach to carbon taxes and indeed how climate change is tackled. By the way, Cavan and other border counties are not the only areas affected by this illicit fuel trade. And it represents a loss in revenue to the government, non adherence to smoky uh, fuel bans, and the real possibility of fuel merchants here having to close and therefore a loss in employment. I'm also still seeing widespread use of single-use plastic. I mean, this needs to be totally cut back and penalties imposed on companies that still insist on using single-use plastic in its packaging. And I also think packaging needs to be clearly marked. I mean, it's still quite confusing as to what is recyclable and what's compostable. And people will be swayed in what they buy if this was clearly marked and identified to them. Um, and we are aware of the positive impact of a sustainable forestry. I mean, it needs to be promoted, not forced on farmers, but promoted as the planting of trees on land which is suitable for such a purpose is so beneficial to the environment. But I'm told by some of the forestry companies that they are totally frustrated by the department delays and bureaucracy. Now, there are delays in applications, they can't get licences to fell trees, and the sawmills are running out of logs. So, I mean, is the solution to import logs here too? It's, that's not, not, not on. Also, retrofitting houses is an important part of fighting climate change. Even with grants, though, it's, not, it's far too expensive for most people to actually afford. Also, the waiting list for any of the home retrofitting schemes are ridiculous. Like for the warmer home scheme, I think the waiting list is now in excess of two years. Um, there's approximately 8,000 houses waiting to be surveyed for the SEA grant scheme. And the number of local authority houses being funded for the retrofit is dismal. Uh, I think it's only 1,300 for the year. So a greater investment in this area is, is, is needed to deal with the backlogs um, and to have more education and apprenticeships and business supports in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy